Worship Center, I pray that you are experiencing uh, the joy of the Lord. You're experiencing the faithfulness of, of our God, just like we are. Uh, he has been so magnificent and so gracious to us that he has kept us in the midst of a chaotic world. He's kept us. He's kept us. He's, he's, he just come through for us each and every time. And I am so grateful to our God. Listen, I want to go ahead and go straight into the word of the Lord on this day. Um, and, um, and I want to, uh, I want to use uh, for, we're going to go back to the passage that we started on on last week. In the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, Romans, the 12th chapter and the second verse, Romans 12 and verse two. Uh, the Bible says this, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect will of God. Um, last week we talked about from the thought, you wanna fix it, but God wants to change it. And I just, I haven't been able to let that go yet. And so we're back at that again. You want to fix it, but God wants to change it. On last week, we came to the conclusion that we all agreed that something needs to change. Something needs to change in our world. Something needs to change in our church. Something needs to change in our individual lives. And so we looked at this scripture and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We learned that the word transform means to make a complete or a dramatic change in the form, in the appearance or the character of a thing. It means to convert. It means to go through a metamorphosis or to make a major change in how something looks or how it functions. Uh, change is often very uncomfortable. Change, is, it can be painful. Uh, making the adjustments when going through change or going through uh, transformation or going through a growth period, uh, it's, it may seem that those adjustments often they seem very awkward. They are awkward because they are something that we are unfamiliar with. There's something that it is outside of our normal sequence of, of, of behavior or how we handle certain things. It, you know, we don't normally respond the same way uh, when we're going through change because we are experiencing, oftentimes it is a discomfort that we feel, but change is necessary. But if we're going to be transformed into something better, uh, and that's what transformation does. Transformation changes us. It does not convert us back to an old pattern or a pattern that was not uh, uh, si significant enough to be deemed as the best thing or the best practice that we have. But when transformation happens, transformation happens uh, to, to convert us into something that is better. And something, and we know that if we go through transformation, transformation means that something in me, come on, something in me needs to change. Uh, you, you know, we can always say they need to change. Oh, they need to fix that. They need to do differently. They need to do better about themselves. No, today we're going to deal with the fact that something in us needs to change something in me something in you it needs uh to be transformed and we need a renewing in our minds uh, in order for the transformation to take full effect for us the truth about this season is that something in me is changing 
it not only needs to change, but something in us is actually changing. And uh, because we are all actually going through the process of being transformed. We're all being changed. We're all being transformed. We're all being converted. And, and prayerfully, our testimonies will be that we are being converted from a mess into a miracle. Come on. That we are being converted from being broken in our spirits and broken in our hearts into being made whole and complete and to being uh, free. Uh, he whom the sun sets free, the Bible says, he to whom the sun sets free is free indeed, but that we are made into a whole creature. We are complete in God. We are being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Uh, and, and, and as a matter of fact, <laughs> we are becoming transformers. Hallelujah. We are becoming transformers. Come on, say it with me. I am a transformer. I am a transformer. I am a transformer. I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind. Uh, I want to use, I want to go to another passage of scripture today uh, that is in the book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah chapter 18, Jeremiah chapter 18, uh, beginning at verse one. The word of God says uh, in Jeremiah 18 and one, it says the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was. He was making something at the wheel and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. Somebody say he did it again. He made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then verse five says, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord, look as the clay is in the potter's hand. So are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Now you guys know that I love to, uh, to take these passages and look at it in various translations. And I found one to be that really, really struck my attention. And it was in the message translation, the message Bible. It says in that same chapter of Jeremiah 18, it says, God told Jeremiah, up, get up on your feet, go to the powder's house. And when you get there, I will tell you what I have to say. So I went to the potter's house and sure enough, the potter was there. He was working away at his will. Whenever the pot the potter was working on turned out badly, as sometimes happens when you are working with clay, the potter would simply start over and use the same clay to make another pot. Come on y'all. Sometimes the potter has, he looks at us and said, eh, that is not exactly what I intended for it to look like. That's not exactly, that's not, that is not the, the, that's not the end product that I was looking for. That's not what I was intending for them to become. And so then what the potter does, what the Lord does is he takes us and he breaks us. He takes us through a season of breaking and he uses the, the, the same clay that he made us with before. And he starts over with us again, my God. He uses the same clay and he makes us into another vessel. He makes us over. The fifth verse says, then God's message came to me and says, can't I do just as this potter does, people of Israel? Watch this potter. In the same way that this potter works his clay, I work on you, people of Israel. And I believe that the Lord is taking us, uh, us jars, us uh, uh, clay, uh, lumps of clay, us uh, vessels, and he is reshaping us into something that will be more useful for the glory of his name. 
Uh, do, okay, so, so, so do you not know that how you, how God created you, that there is, that in you, there is something very powerful. That, listen, that we are, we are these lumps of clay. We are these vessels and we are these broken pots and we are those um, um, who the Lord has fashioned in his own hand. Uh, and, and matter of fact, in Psalms 139 and 14, the Bible says, uh, uh, David said it like this. He said, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And so, and so God has made us and he's made us, he's taken his time to make us. But every now and then he has to take us through a reshaping process uh, because of the effects of what we do with our bodies and what we do with our spirits and where we take our thoughts and where we take our allegiance and how we go from uh, serving God to serving other things. And the Lord is saying, no, 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 no. I created you for my praise. I created you for my glory. I created you in my image and in my likeness. And I, I, I fearfully and I wonderfully made you. Uh, and, and when I looked at you, when I first made you, it was marvelous in my, in my sight. That's, that's what in, in, in Psalms 139 and 14, he said, marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. So do you not know that there is something that in you, God has created us so uniquely and with such uh, precision that in you, that when you get under attack, when you go through your greatest trial, your greatest struggle, that he has designed you to be able to bounce back from any attack. He's designed you to recover from any sickness or disease. He's designed you to be able to, uh, to, to get through everything that perhaps the enemy has thrown up against you to cause you to not be effective, to cause you to not look you have, look like you have been fearfully and wonderfully made, to make you look like you are not even a child of God. But God has designed us to be able to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Okay, okay, so, so I, 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 I looked at this, I looked at this passage in Jeremiah 18, about how God takes the, the 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 potter takes takes the clay and he reshapes us. And I began to think about I began to think about the transformers, the transformers. I know that there's been a whole uh, uh, multiple multiple episodes and a series of the movie the transformers. And there are uh, the there are toys that are out. There are uh, action figures that are made in to transformers and I began to the Lord began to take my mind to look at the transformers he uh, with the transformer in the natural in the natural in the natural in the movie world okay uh, um, in the in the in the the uh, action figures that uh, little children have uh, in their possession I don't know maybe some of you adults carry them as well but the transformers they look like one thing when you first get them but after you play around with it, after you begin to move, uh, move an arm or move his head or move his legs or, or, or you start to uh, tap into and see what it is made of, you find out that there are actually weapons that are embedded into the body of the transformer. And so when that, when that, when that person, when they are in their human life, human self, when they go through, uh, a, get to a situation where there is trouble or where there is uh, great trauma or whether there is uh, uh, some sense of, of urgency, that there is a problem that is approaching them or that is a, attempting to attack them, then, then that's when the transformer begins to transform into an actual weapon. It becomes, it becomes, uh, it goes from standing on his feet and looking like a man to going into, to converting itself into 
a car that is deadly in its force, that has a lot of power behind it. It becomes a, a, a flying saucer or an airplane. And so uh, similar to robotic transformers, the master creator has taken extra care with us, his people, to include, come on, he includes weapons in your hands. Hallelujah. Uh, the, the, okay, did he not say that the Bible is a two-edged sword? The word of God, you can, you can use the word of God. It is a weapon in your hands. It's a weapon in your mouth. And, and, and so he, he includes weapons in our hands. He includes weapons in our fingers and in our feet and in our shoulders and in our mouth. Okay, so, all right, all right, let me go. Look at Psalms 144 and 1. Psalms 144 and 1. It says, Blessed be the Lord my God, the Lord my rock who trains, come on, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He trains my fingers and my hands to do fight. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Romans 16 and 20 says this. It says that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. We are these transformers in the hands of God. That when we are met with opposition, when we are met with war, that he that embedded in us are weapons of mass destruction. There are weapons uh, that if we use them properly, we can transform and we can do battle for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say it with me. I am a transformer. I am a transformer. I have been transformed. I'm being transformed right now by the renewing of my mind. Now, let me go back to this chain situation. We don't like change. Come on, let's be real. We don't like change because change when it comes, and that's why a lot of people are having difficulty in this season, because this season represents a significant change in our behavior, in our way that we go through life, that we do business, that we uh, do ministry, that we, uh, that we work, uh, that we uh, handle our finances. Everything about our world and our lives has changed. But we don't like change because change requires us to give up the right or to give up our control of certain situations. We don't want to, uh, to relinquish control. We want to be in command. We want to be in charge. We, and so oftentimes, we will resist any changes that we did not orchestrate ourselves. We will resist it. We will, we will walk away from it. So, so when God comes to transform our lives and he has us on the potter's wheel, uh, because we don't like change, we will, we will find ourselves jumping off the wheel. Come on. We'll try. We'll find ourselves jumping off the wheel and we'll try to run away from the potter's hand because we don't like the pressure that comes uh, from being in his hands and, and the fact that he's molding us and he's making us into this new, uh, into this new weapon, into this new uh, vessel, into this new pot. But what I want to encourage you today to do is to stay on the potter's wheel. Come on, stay on the potter's wheel. Don't jump off the wheel. Don't jump out of the hands of God, but stay in the place where you are flexible enough to be reconstructed so that he can literally uh, transform your mind so that he can transform your entire life. You got to stay tapped into him in this season. We got to stay tapped into God. We got to stay connected and we got to stay uh, in his hands and persevere. In other words, you got to hang in there with the Lord. You got to hang in there and not give up. You cannot jump off the wheel. You cannot jump out of the process, but we have to allow the father, the potter. We've got to allow the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, the creator of mankind. We have to allow him to mold us and to shape us 
in this time of processing. Yes, yes, yes. This is a time of processing. It's a time of processing. I don't want to go into all of the ways that the Lord is processing us in this time. But if you look at your whole life right now, you will know that you are a whole process system by yourself. Hallelujah. By yourself, you are a whole system that is being processed. And we all are being processed at the same time. Oh God. And this time is critical. It is critical because, because it is in this season that, that he is fine-tuning all of the tools and all of the weapons that he has created in us because uh, some of our weapons have a little rust on them. Some of our weapons uh, have not been used in a while. And so now God is, uh, he is fine-tuning, is a tune-up on our system he's fine-tuning our weapons so that when we come out of this we will come out of it better hallelujah we got to come out of this better so it is important for us to be transformed so that we can come out of this season better he, he, he's not he doesn't have us on the wheel uh, so that he can uh, just lay us down and then we and then that's all it is going to be to us no there is something else that's coming out of this we're going to be better in the process of time in the process of time God's going to do it so as a transformer as a transformer you and I we come fully loaded with the power of the Holy Spirit hallelujah we come fully, we're transformers. And so the transformers are fully loaded. You already have all your weapons. Everything is already there, but now it is a fine tuning situation where God wants to make sure that when you show up as a transformer, that the power of his great name, that it will bring good news. Hallelujah. You're not transformed so that you can show up about you. You are being transformed so you can show up and bring people him. We are, we are, we are being transformed so that we can bring good news and make people aware of the loving nature of our God. God is love and God is, is sovereign and God uh, cares about his people. And so we as a transformer, the Holy Spirit in us will bring good news, hallelujah. It will bring not only good news, but it will bring the love of God. It will also shift atmospheres, hallelujah. We gotta shift some atmospheres here. Okay, okay, so have you ever walked into a room? You ever walked into a room where just about everybody in there has uh, has some form of instability or some type of nervousness going on, some anxiety, and there's confusion that it is so thick in the room that when you get in there, you, you're like, God, what is this? But then because you are a transformer and because you have been sent to shift an atmosphere from being chaotic, uh, that you... you you, you, you find yourself refusing to subject yourself to their unbridled behavior. You start saying things like, what is this? What's wrong with these people? How did I end up in this situation? Lord, I know I don't do, you, Lord, you know now, Lord, you know I don't do stress. And so I'm going to need you to make this right so I can do what I'm here to do. And that is because the reason why when you walk into situations like that the reason why you feel an uncomfortableness about it not because you need to adjust to the atmosphere but because the lord has sent you in that place for you to be a change agent for that particular people and so as a transformer when you show up or when you walk into a place when that that environment or that atmosphere should change change for the better because you are there as a representative of the kingdom of God. You are there as a representative of the potter. You're a representative of the creator of the ends of the world. You are there because God sent you there to be 
a change agent. You are there to shift the atmosphere and to say there's got to be some peace in here. This situation can no longer be chaotic, but it has to exhibit the peace of the God that I serve. Come on, say it with me. I am a change agent. I am a change agent and I am a transformer. I am a transformer. I am a change agent. I'm not regular. Yes, I preached a sermon years ago about I'm not regular. We are a chosen generation. We are a peculiar people, but we're not regular. That, and so you cannot subject yourself and, 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 and allow yourself to be converted to something that does not reflect your creator. Come on. You cannot allow yourself because you're not regular. Regular people uh, to just, just become whatever people want them to become. But when you are a child of God, when you are a transformer, you cannot be converted into something or somebody that God has not created you to be. Come on, say it with me. I am a transformer. I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind. You can't expect me to be like everybody else because <laughs> I've been shut in for processing. We've been shut in. We've been on the master's wheel. We're on the master's wheel even right now. And we're in for a time of uh, not just repair, but uh, processing. And so here's the deal. When you see me next time, come on. When you see me next time, I may not look like I used to look. Come on. I may not look the same. I may not, when you see me the next time, I may not, I may not act the same way that I used to act. I, I may not sound the way I used to sound. My, my, my conversation with you may be a little bit different because I've been in for processing. I've been in being transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm having a, a whole ultimate makeover in this season. Why? Because what I was trying to fix in me. <laughs> God came and put me back on the potter's wheel to change and to transform me. Wow. I, you may not see me looking like I, like I looked before we went in shut down, uh, shut in, and we went in, into this uh, situation, what we have called and have labeled as the pandemic and, and sheltering in place. When we come out of this, we ought not look the same way that we looked when we came in. And I'm not talking about you just got a new hairstyle. You got a new, you had some new makeup that you're playing around in, or you, you know, or you decided to change your wardrobe, or you're going to do something else. I'm not talking about that external stuff, but I'm talking about the fact that what God has transformed by the renewing of your mind has actually changed the appearance of who you are in him. You don't don't look the same because he has transformed you and made you over into another vessel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was trying to fix myself, but God came along and he said, that's not good enough. I need to change you. There needs to be some change in you. And so I, I need you on my wheel so I can transform you. I need to work on your mind. I need to I need to work on your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to work on your heart. Some of us our hearts have been have been damaged in in the last season before we went into this shut-in time. And so the Lord has pulled us off the front lines and pulled us into a place where he can deal with us by himself, where he takes you out of the public eye. He takes you out of the, of the rat race, so to speak. He takes you out of the, uh, uh, out of the running here and there and, and trying to be and trying to perform and trying to, uh, to fit into situations where God is saying, no, 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 let me transform you. Let me fix that. Because some of the stuff that we have run after in the last season was the stuff <laughs> that has us on the potter's wheel right now. And all of us has something that needs to be on the potter's wheel. Come on. From the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, from the in-betweens, everybody, everybody everywhere has something that needs to be 
on the potter's wheel that needs to be put in the hands of God. We are lumps of clay that need to be changed, that need to be transformed, that need to be uh, reshapen and molded into the image that God intended for us to be. Hallelujah. So today, today, if you have heard this word and now you realize that's me, I need to change. You realize that you need the Lord in your life or you need the Lord's help. You say, I, I don't know how to, I don't even know how to talk with him. I, I, I don't know how to communicate with him. I want you to um, put it in the comments and let us know and say, Lord, help me to know you. Help me to know you and someone from our team will contact you with some practical tips on how we can make that, you can make that happen. Or if you say, I just wanna be connected to this ministry, the Be Restored Virtual Worship family, um, let us know, I wanna be connected and we will respond to you as well. So I want to say to you today, thank you for joining us here on Facebook Live and in our virtual worship center. Let us know if you were blessed by this word today. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, you can give um, with uh, the giving options that are available. You can go to our website, berestored.net, and you can make your gifts there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is in Jesus' name we pray for you today. Amen. And thank God. Amen. And thank Lord, God. Make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. You are a transform in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I'm